Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Mentes. So legalized sports betting is in New Jersey. What happens now? Let me introduce you to a man that's been involved from the very beginning, Bill Pascrell III, with the Princeton Public Affairs Group, and he is a sports betting expert. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having it. me, Larry. Oh, absolutely. So, so talk about the nine years first. Let, let's go through the process, because how did it start, and when did you know it was going to happen? It's a great story. Uh, August of uh, 2009, when Governor Corzine was uh, being challenged by then former U.S. Attorney Chris Christie. This is the story. Uh, Chris Christie went on the fan, not really to talk about this issue. It's just one of those political things you want to be on the fan if you're running in, in no, for statewide office in New Jersey. And he was asked a question. Uh, Boomer asked him whether he supported sports betting, regulated, you know, uh, legal sports betting, and he said he absolutely did. I was retained. Uh, a few months prior to that to uh, work on a couple of issues. Exchange wagering for horse tracks, which is peer-to-peer -peer betting, where the track only takes a rake, they don't have anything to lose. Online gaming, which we got done in 2013 and has been an extraordinary boom to the state, and legalized sports betting. So involved early on with folks like Joe Brennan and Dennis Drazen, who deserves a lot of credit for what's happened here. Dennis has been a client for a long time. And Monmouth Park, of course, kicked it off in, uh, last Thursday, uh, uh, where they had, were the first book. I want to go back to that first moment on, on WFAN. Did you know the question was coming? No, I didn't. Uh, did, did, had you already planned in the campaign to be for legalized sports betting? No, we were going to, uh, 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 Senator Lesniak had taken uh, a pro bono case, brought a case before the federal district courts to challenge Paspalari the Professional Amateur Sports Protection Act, which ironically was sponsored by Bill Bradley, Dollar Bill Bradley. Oh, wow. Senator Bradley sponsored it. I was working in the Florio administration as counsel to the governor back in 1992 when PASPA passed. There was a 12-month window for any state to opt in. Governor Florio wanted to opt in. Chuck Hytanian did not want to opt in. It was in. a huge story when Chris Christie beat John Corzine. It was a big story at the time. How much did that answer, how much did legalized sports betting play into that campaign at all? It didn't play at all into the campaign. It wasn't an issue. Uh, it, it was sort of in its nascent form. But we met with Governor Christie, then elect Governor Christie a few weeks after that, and we told him what we wanted to do, and he was all in from day one. And, you know, it's... It, it, the partisan politics, put it aside, because you know I'm a yellow dog Democrat. Chris Christie deserves a lot of credit for what's been done. Uh, he stuck with it. But what's also interesting and hasn't been told really yet, so maybe this will be the first opportunity to tell it in a public, magnified way, Governor Christie approached us the day this was on the Senate agenda to go before the voters, and he asked us to take it down because he was trying to pursue the Super Bowl. Chris Christie did something remarkable. He not only got the Super Bowl, but kept his commitment. Six months later, we had this on the ballot. So once he secured this, because he knew if this got voted on while he was trying to pursue the Super Bowl, the NFL would have pulled it away. He believed he could get the Super Bowl. I didn't believe he could do it, and he did it. I'm not here to kind of hump for Governor Christie, but well, you give are. credit where credit is due. <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, that's, yeah, that's, that's, good that's what you do. Yeah. And it's probably more important to come from a Democrat than, than, than a Republican. I think he did an extraordinary job at getting the Super Bowl and at getting sports betting. And, and, he, and you know, it paid off many years later, but uh, May 4th when the Supreme Court announced, we were, we were just so excited. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and now you have it, so let's talk about what's going to happen now. Let's start with the money, because the money was, by the adv for the advocates of legalized sports betting, they kept pushing these big numbers, big numbers, $100 million in taxes. Dennis Drazen said that several times. And he said that William Hill ran figures. It's going to be $100 million in taxes. We just had Vin Gopal, Senator Vin Gopal, on. They said in the budget, they're assuming 15 to $25 million. He, he admitted that was a conservative number. Where is the number I in your estimate? Larry, I want to go back to when online gaming passed, which I was a big part of um, in 2013. Governor Christie, in that budget, he was running for office for re-election that year for governor. He projected, here's where I'm going to go on the other side, okay. give him credit. Here's where I give him a little criticism. He put a billion dollars in the budget, which the Office of Legislative Services confirmed, for that budget. You know what we did in the first year? Barely $100 million. Barely. So 
I don't think there should be a lot of debate on what the numbers should be. Nobody really knows. It's a guesstimate. But I'd rather our politicians guess conservatively so that if we exceed the number, it'll go into surplus and there'll be a, a surplus in the Jersey budget right. for a change. So I don't, I don't think we so should So 25 million is a safe number? I think it's safe. I think we'll eclipse that. But I've been wrong before. <laughs> what are some of the problems now? We've opened up in Atlantic City. They've opened up at Monmouth Park. What are some of the problems facing uh, legalized sports betting now in New Jersey that, that somebody like me is not seeing? The entire world, not just the nation, is watching New Jersey. New Jersey has a reputation, the Division of Gaming Enforcement, which regulates all of gaming in New Jersey, and now has this added uh, responsibility are being watched keenly by the European markets, the Australian markets, the Asian markets, South America, because they've always got it right. It's a tough nut. If you could make it here, as they say, you could make it anywhere, because it's a tough regulated market. But what, what, what is important to note, and this might be too granular, but I think it's important, Dave Reebok, the head of the Division of Gaming Enforcement, who Governor Murphy wisely kept on. I think Governor Murphy did a great job at keeping a close advisor to Christie on for the right reasons. We're going to get sports betting. We better get it right. And we don't want to let a political you know, appointment come in and kind of take this over and learn on a job. Reebok's been working every step of the way for the last eight years on this issue. He knows it well. In addition to all the online gaming companies and two new casinos soon to open, Hard Rock and Ocean Resort, the former Revel. That's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of licensing. There's a lot of regulatory work. Dave Reebok got out within a week, and two days after the governor signed the bill, a whole set of regulations. Now you have a bunch of different sports betting operators, predominantly European-based, who want to marry with the racetracks and the casinos. Don't forget. Oh, I see. So he has to license all them. That's an incredible amount of work with a very thin staff, so they get credit. You mentioned the Hard Rock Cafe, and I recently talked to the CEO of the Hard Rock in, in Atlantic City. He said they're not going to open with a sports book. And one of the reasons he said, he said, you know, the sports book is about 3% of our, of our profit. That's about 3% of our take. So when we do it, we want to do it right. It's not saying he's not going to do it, but it did, to me, put kind of a, a, a wet blanket on the whole thing when I heard that it was only about 3%. That number is correct, right? 3% of profits, okay, handles different. What you bring in for, for betting is different. And there's also the conversion rate. Getting your existing customers, which aren't betting online, right, up until, or betting at the casino now, getting them to convert to become sports bettors. Don't forget, right now it's just brick and mortar. You gotta go to the physical facility to place a bet. In the next 30 to 60 days, we're gonna have online sports betting. So you go to Monmouth Park, you go to Borgata, or you go to some of the other venues that are going to have sports betting, you'll be captured, you'll be able to bet from home, and then come back. And I've always said, remember the argument, and you covered this well, the argument before the state legislature five, six years ago on, on online gaming was, isn't this going to cannibalize the industry? You have a refrigerator at home, and so do I. But I bet you, Larry, you and I still go out to dinner, don't we? So, so there's the social aspect of this. Online gaming has mushroomed in New Jersey. It's now a $250 million market and growing year over year. It's the only part of the market in Atlantic City that's actually growing right now. So I think that some people are kind of gradually getting into it, but they better hurry up and get into it because there's ancillary benefits to having a sports book. Right, I just hold that point for a second. We'll pick up on that when we come back with Bill Pascrell III, Princeton Public Affairs Group, and sports betting expert when Jersey Matters continues.